You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. No, oh, oh, and the bottle. on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Whoa! Ahoy, fellow human! Welcome back to Higher Ideas. Oh, what? What's that sound? What's it sound like? I'm rowing my butt off. I've been for months. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Huh? Of course we're on a boat. We're on the SS Higher Ideas. Don't you remember? You don't remember? No, okay. All right. Remember way back when this podcast began? I told you, I had always been a deep thinker. I told you I was going to share that with you if you wanted to come along for the ride, don't you remember? And we've been on this boat ever since. Didn't you even notice? Oh, man. I've been rowing here all this time, and boy, are my arms tired. Whew. Alright, hold on. Just a second. Oh. Here we finally are. About time. Oh. Whew. Just smell that open air. Smell that open air. Oh, what? What? Where is here? Well, look, look. Look. I marked it on this map. See? I called this place the rabbit hole. Take a look around. What do you see? Hmm? Nothing but open waters, huh? Not a trace of land anywhere. The middle of an endless ocean. But this is no earthly ocean, you may notice. As far as the eye can see, the surface is quiet and the waters are black, like oil, kind of eerie. This, my friends, is the ocean of thoughts. We've been drifting around the surface of this thing for months. Tell you the truth, I've been kind of bored out of my mind, anxious to get here with you. You see, most people, when it comes to thinking, like to stay at the surface, near the beaches, near other people. They like to dip their toes in when it's convenient and always feel the bottom underfoot. Always secure. They like to come out and dry off in the sun after a short swim. It's comfortable. It's pleasant. But how many treasures have ever been found on a beach? How many great discoveries have ever been made where everybody treads? Well, that's not how I like my thoughts. This is my domain. The deepest waters imaginable. Exploration of the uncharted. There is nowhere more uncharted than what's beneath the surface of your own mind. And you are the only person that can do it. Look down over the edge. Let's have a look. It's a wall of liquid black. It's so deep, I've never found a bottom. It's enough to induce vertigo when you really think about it. An abyss of pure thoughts. Absolutely beautiful. These waters are black because thought can't be perceived from a distance. It must be explored to be felt. Just skimming around this boring old surface, we could never hope to know what lies down there. But I've been diving these waters since I could think, and I assure you, there are wonders below. I've called this podcast Higher Ideas. Well, that's what I call the treasures I found down there. Higher ideas come from the waters of deeper thought. And now, it's time to dive in there and abandon the superficial worlds. Now, don't worry, it's perfectly safe. 
Besides, I'm a regular Tarzan down here. This is my home. Well, enough talk. Let's get going, huh? No, what, what? Huh? Why am I getting naked? We're all human, friends. This kind of nakedness is nothing compared to the truths we'll face down there. Now, come on. Take my hand. Take my hand. We'll go in together, all right? Higher Ideas Podcast Season 2 starts not with a bang, but with a splash! Oh, well, 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 look who jumped in with me. I'm pretty impressed. Hey, what's the matter? No. Oh, you don't have to hold your breath down here. Come on, relax, breathe. Ah, this isn't water. I told you this isn't water. This is thought. This is the ocean of thought. And you took quite a bold step there, jumping in. It's a very important step. You've broken through the surface. As you look up, you'll see the light of the surface world along with our little boat receding into the distance and fading out of view. We're sinking. We're sinking feet first, down and down into a darker and more intimate abyss of thought. Well, there are some mechanics down here, and it's probably about time to explain them. The thing making us sink isn't gravity. There isn't gravity here. The thing making us sink right now is curiosity. It's the same reason you're still hearing these words rather than stopping the episode. Curiosity. We're diving deeper and deeper, driven by curiosity, called on by the promise of discovery below. But why aren't we sinking faster? We probably could. Well, the counterforce here is ego. So your ego doesn't want to go down there. And here's why. There are creatures in this water. There are all kinds of terrifying, horrifying, mighty, giant creatures. Some are fast, some are strong, some are slippery, some are electric, some are exotic, some are dangerous. There are creatures in the darkness all around us here. With claws, with jaws, with rows of razor sharp fangs. But you don't have to worry about any of that. These creatures are called ideas. And see, they only prey on each other. And your ego is an idea. You see, your ego isn't real. Your ego is a collection of ideas, beliefs, thoughts, that you've built around yourself as a defense. And those creatures do have power over that. Those creatures can rip it from your bones. But not you. You're different. You're something else. So as we descend, your ego resists. And it'll try to convince you from time to time to abandon this crazy quest and swim back to the surface for a breath of beautiful, stale surface air. But as I said, you don't need to breathe, and there's no reason why we can't keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper. No reason besides preserving and protecting our precious egos. And as we continue to descend down this unimaginably giant ocean of thoughts, we're still just at the surface. So it's as good a time as any to share with you one of the most important lessons I've learned down here. And that is the difference between different levels of truth and knowledge. See, when you say you know something, or someone tells you something is the truth, there are actually three different meanings to both of those words. Three different degrees of truth and knowledge. In short, the three degrees are as follows. Reports from others, that is the first degree. Recycled experience, in other words. Your own experience, that's the second degree. Direct witnessing or experience of something. And then the third degree. All-knowing, all-seeing, complete knowledge of everything. In other words, the perspective of a god. And these are the three levels of truth. When information comes from the first level, in other words, reading something in a book, being told a story of a life experience of someone else, being told a truth, being delivered a truth, this is the truth, please accept it, trust me. 
This is all first degree truth and knowledge. It's untested. It's hearsay. And by and large, this is what we base our entire beliefs on reality upon. See, since we're born, people are coming around as giving us first degree truth and knowledge in school, in society, through the norms of our culture, through religions, through our parents. I mean, people come at you with all sorts of truth and knowledge that you're expected to swallow and adopt in your model of the world. And in the shuffle, there seems to be a minimizing or a complete usurping of the second degree. That is your own experience, your own thoughts, your own mind, what you believe and what you see based on what you have experienced and seen. Of course, compared to the masses of people in the first degree trying to throw information at you, your little opinion, your little perspective in the second degree sure doesn't feel like it's that important. It feels outvoted, so we put it away. But the thing is, in the second degree, in the realm of personal experience, investigation, committing thought to something, personal logic and reason, within that are lessons and growth that is so much more potent than anything from the first degree. So let's break into examples here. Think about love. Think about sex. Think about pain, hunger, suffering, all these things. Now imagine a time before you experienced any of those. And now imagine someone coming along and trying to tell you what they're like. This would be first degree information arriving at you from someone else's perspectives. Someone could spend all day long trying to tell you what sex is like, trying to tell you what love is like, pain, suffering. We can spend weeks trying to tell someone what it's like, but they really will not know these things until they've experienced them themselves. So how can we say that the second degree truth and knowledge is somehow inferior? But that's how we're raised. Raised to treasure our individuality, but not so much to trust our own senses and thoughts and instincts, our hearts. What is the point of being alive as an individual if you're not going to follow your own compass, if you're not going to do what feels right for you. So far too many people out there, I think, ignore their second degree input and live on the surface world, the first degree. Life according to everyone else. And that's what we just left up there in that little boat. We are now in the second degree realm, a realm of our own feeling and exploration and discovery. And it's frightening because we feel alone, but this place is vast and full of growth for those who explore it. And that brings us to the third degree, ultimate enlightenment, the all-encompassing truth of all things, the absolutely unfiltered, unmasked, unbridled truth of everything, and ultimate knowledge knowledge of all things in every corner of the galaxy, in every universe, in every time, in every reality, in every level of dimensions. It's quite a tall order, but the thing is, it is possible to attain. Maybe not in our puny lifespans, but it's only logical to realize that any step you take towards that place brings you closer to that place. And if you're getting closer to it, it exists. So every piece of enlightenment you can find for yourself through digging through life in the second degree brings you closer to the third degree. So you can see people who stay in their boats and never discover what's below the waves. Well, they don't really get anywhere, do they? They travel around quite a bit in their little boats in that big, vast ocean, but all they find is emptiness in each other. The real treasures come when we explore, when we dive when we conquer fear and continue deeper. These are the treasures we'll find. Bits of enlightenment scattered all throughout this place. Somewhere way down there below our feet, so far down that we can't even see its light, is a giant glowing nexus of enlightenment, completion of knowledge of everything, of ultimate truth. I know it's down there.
I've gone deep enough to feel it. So for today, the message is this. Realize that anything I tell you about my second degree experience will only reach you as first degree truth and knowledge. And I'll never try to convince you it's anything realer than that. What I want to convince you of is to investigate it yourself. Feel it out with your own heart. Reason things logically. Dig through them. See if there's any bits in there that to you feel like they make sense. That is a nugget of enlightenment. Take that and hold it. And you will keep it within you if you've reached for it through the second degree, through experiencing it yourself, through digesting it yourself, through testing it yourself. If you do the work and find some value in any of the first or second degree truths I give you, then I've saved you some time and you've grown a little. How amazing is that? We are literally sharing bits of enlightenment with each other. But it's important that things graduate from theory, from the first degree, to experience the second degree before anyone can really accept them as valid. So it's good to practice that in everyday life. Every single piece of information that comes in at you, try and really sit down and absorb it. And if at all possible, experience it, test it yourself. See what the truth of it is for yourself. And if you do find any truth, then you'll know that it's valid because you have seen it yourself. So a little less faith in other people's stories, please. And a little more faith in yourself. Well, I think that's enough rambling for today. As we continue to sink deeper, I bid you farewell for now. Thank you for joining me in season two. Thank you for jumping into this mysterious pit of discovery. And I know you won't regret it. So until next time, keep thinking.